In today's video, I'm gonna be taking on the challenge of recreating old TSG DIYs. A B C <gasps> DIY for you. This oh, is a this little baby. And then like this is how you can stand it. The most professional. <laughs> Was that even insightful whatsoever? Using a drill is like riding a bike. Hello, hello, my name is Rachel and welcome back to The Story Girls. On this channel, we do all things DIY and design, all through a lens of sustainability and personal empowerment. If you're new to this channel, what you might not know is that I'm also newer to appearing on the channel and that The Story Girls have been on YouTube for over a decade. The other two amazing creators who create content for The Story Girls is Kelsey and Becky. And it's definitely safe to say that they have come a long way from the DIYs and projects that they did back in the day until now, obviously. If they didn't, we'd have a problem. And you know what? I thought it would be fun to take a trip down memory lane together, watch some old TSG DIY videos, follow along, and my real goal is to hopefully improve them. And the nice way of me saying that is to elevate them or modernize them or add a little Rachel Spice. That's me solving. Let's go watch a video together. Okay, our first video is called Easy to Copper Pipe DIYs and this debuted August 4th, 2015. Let's see what we got. I'm just jamming to the music right now. Okay, off the top, this video just screams 2015 because of like the geometric shaped light fixture. A lot more rose gold at that time than there we see now. Now it's a lot more brass and silver, but okay, I'm here for it. Ladies and gentlemen on the internet, my name is Kelsey. And I'm Becky. And we're the Star Girls. Yes, we are. The energy is everything. Today we have for you three different copper DIYs that you could do out of copper piping. And we were like, guys, we have some left over. Who wants to see more copper DIYs? And everyone was like, let's do it. The first copper pipe DIY is a hanging jewelry holder. To cut your pipe, you'll need a pipe cutter. So keep tightening and twisting until the pipe splits in half. Watching the pipe break like that was so satisfying. I've used a pipe cutter before, but. Undo your jewelry and clip it together around the pipe for a super chic display. Okay, that one was very straightforward. That's easy. It's a bit too easy. Our second DIY is a 3D copper diamond pendant light shade. I don't know who came up with this one exactly. Maybe it was Becky, but like the scope of the design here is really cool how it's all gonna come together. So this is very impressive, you guys. Very impressive. Our final copper pipe DIY is copper pipe handles. I like this one. Copper pipe handles. If your copper is looking dingy and a little bit tarnished, wipe on a little bit of regular ketchup and it'll shine right up. Ketchup? Am I the only one who didn't know that hot tip? Is it because of the vinegar in there? That's crazy. Hammer your clips into the drawers. Once they're almost all the way in, slide your copper pipe into place and finish it by hammering the clips all the way into place. So smart, so easy. Hope you guys like that DIY. Hope you guys like that DIY. <laughs> Sorry guys. Are you guys following us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook? And Facebook. They're so cute. cute and silly. And they're still cute and silly, but <sighs> this is just really warming my heart right now. <laughs> those were really cool DIYs. I think the one I want to take on are those handles. I think they're actually really beautiful. And what I have to work with is copper tubing, some clips, and that's pretty much it. Okay. Okay. We know the task at hand. Let's go DIY. Okay, so I'm gonna make the copper pipe drawer pulls, but I wanna add a little spice. And what I'm gonna do to the copper is actually create a patina finish. And if you don't know what a patina finish is, it's when copper oxidizes and it creates this kind of blue, green, turquoise, it has kind of a stone texture effect on the copper. So we're gonna lose the rose gold and it's gonna become this really cool blue green texture. When copper does turn into a patina finish. It's something that can happen naturally over time, but it's also something that you can force with just household products. So before we do that, I'm gonna cut this pipe down with a pipe cutter. The copper pipe I'm using is a half an inch in diameter and each drawer pull is gonna be eight inches long. To use a pipe cutter, all you have to do is tighten the blade up to the pipe and twist around the pipe. And what you're gonna do is create a groove. <laughs> My hands are just so sweaty all the time. <laughs> I'm honestly not kidding. <laughs> I'm exposing my sweaty palms. And as you twist around, you keep tightening the blade till eventually it'll just snap off. Yes. 
voila, ici. There's your French word of the day. Before we can move on with the patina finish, first you wanna sand your copper pieces. It, copper comes with a coating on top. It just helps protect your copper, probably from oxidizing like we're doing, but we wanna remove that. Becky had used copper U-clips, but we already had these copper pipe straps in our white drawer set, so I just wanted to use what we already had. I also think they're a little bit cuter. And I also wanna add some copper pipe caps on the ends, just to give them more of a finish. So we're gonna sand all of these pieces. And then like this is how you can stand it. The most professional. <laughs> Come on, how else would you do this? <laughs> like, I'm not gonna sit here like this. I mean, I guess I could. Also sanding this is gonna help create a more porous surface. So we're gonna have more opportunity for oxidization. Now that all our pieces are sanded, all we need is some paper towel, a plastic container, ammonia, and table salt. This container is for our ammonia chamber. And before I pour any ammonia in here, I wanna create support beams for all of our copper pieces to be able to suspend within this container. I'm gonna put a paper towel in the bottom of our chamber. This is gonna help soak up the ammonia and keep it wet. All right, I'm feeding this through again so we can suspend it in our ammonia chamber. And then to hold our little pieces. It wasn't as good as I thought it would be. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna pour this ammonia over the paper towel and let the paper towel soak it all up. Working with ammonia can be irritating, so it's best to always wear protection, and at the very least, always be working with it in a well-ventilated area. Here, I also found using a paintbrush helped me fully saturate all my small pieces. We also put ammonia in a spray bottle, so you could also just... When adding the salt, you don't have to go crazy here. You really don't need much at all. So I'm just gonna sprinkle and I'm just using regular table salt. And I'm just gonna slowly rotate these and try and get salt on all the sides. We're already starting to see a little bit of reaction with the copper and the ammonia. The salt is only going to enhance the color. So put your lid on and let this little ammonia chamber do its thing. You can do it up to four hours. I'm actually gonna leave it overnight and see what kind of result we get in the morning, but the amount of time that you leave it for will alter the results that you get. So it's fun to play around with, but in the meantime, let's go do another DIY. Okay, I wanna preface this one just a little bit. Um, Kelsey and Becky have a literal series of mason jar DIYs. Before the story girls, who would have thought how many freaking things you could do with a mason jar? So I just felt in Sorry Girls fashion and tradition, let's do a mason jar DIY. It's an opportunity I could not pass. This one's called DIY Mason Jar Light Slash Lantern and it premiered May 31st, 2013. That's almost nine years ago. Look how cute this style is. That is really nice looking. So today we have a mason jar <gasps> DIY for you to go along with the entire series. This oh, is a they're so baby. They're not babies, obviously, but they just look such innocent versions of themselves because now they're not tame. <laughs> to make this, you're going to need a large mason jar, a cord, and you're going to need obviously a light bulb and a hammer and nails. Okay, the difference in energy between this and the one we previously watched, you can just tell how much they've grown in those couple years. Also, like, why is this giving me Twilight? <laughs> what you're first gonna do is take apart your mason jar and trace out the shape of it on the back of the mason jar lid. This part's a little bit tedious, so you're gonna go around in a circle and just punch little, little holes all, right, all the way around. I don't, I don't know if I'm like, I'm just in awe. I really can't stop smiling. So we bought this uh, silver metallic spray paint from Home Depot called Satin Nickel. <laughs> we love the name of it. Satin Nickel. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Just the chemistry between Kelsey and Becky here is so cute because like this still exists today. They're a definite team. It's a dream team, honestly. 
Then you're going to take the extra little screw piece for uh, support and it kind of wedges everything together. And then you're gonna put the whole thing on and then use the big round screw thing to screw it all together. Sounds like a lot of steps, but it's just eight. <laughs> I love IKEA. Um, <laughs> can we just do anyways, a replay? I love IKEA. Uh, if you want to see more, you can click here to see other mason jar videos. Bye. Yes, you can. Look how many mason jars they've made. Really, really, really well done. Okay, so to take this down to its bare bones, we have a mason jar to work with, a light plug-in light cord, and obviously a bulb. So let's go make a mason jar light. We have our light cord. This is from Home Depot. Typical old mason jar and a bulb. If only I had a cuter mason jar. Well, isn't this the cutest mason jar you ever did see? <laughs> One second, let me finish this. I bought these mason jars on Amazon and my hope is that when you put the bulb in, it's gonna refract the light and look a lot more pretty. Another way I'm gonna alter this mason jar light is actually cut off the bottom of our mason jar so that it has more of a sconce feeling. So to cut the glass, I'm using this pistol grip glass cutter. And what it has is this small rotary blade in it. And what it does is score our glass in order to create a weak point. That is gonna come in handy later and I'll show you. There are glass cutters that actually hold the cup or bottle or whatever it is you're cutting itself, but we already have this one. So I'm gonna clamp this down to the table at the height that I want. And why I'm doing this is because I wanna create a consistent line all the way around our cup. And really carefully, I'm gonna apply pressure to our cup and slowly make my way around the whole glass. What I don't wanna do is overlap your line. So try your best to start and end at the same point. You can't really see it because it's on a groove, but our line is right here. So what I have here is a hot bath and a cold ice bath. What this does is the hot water expands the glass while the cold would make it retract. And when you have a weak point, hopefully, the glass is gonna break where we've created this sensitive spot. By alternating between both of these, hopefully we're left with an open-ended jar. Okay, okay. Next, what I wanna do is just give this a nice sand so we're not working with any harsh edges. And what I've done, I've taped a piece of sandpaper, this is a four inch grit sandpaper, to our table. And what I've done is put water on top of it. The water, especially when you're sanding something like glass, it's gonna help contain the dust because you don't wanna breathe in these tiny little dust particles. So I'm gonna wear my mask and I'm just gonna slowly make this a smoother, smoother edge. Okay. I feel pretty good about this. And it's actually really cool. You can see how the glass has collected in the water here. It's all kind of cloudy and white. So now that the base of our light is all prepped, let's move on to the lid. As we saw earlier in the video, I'm gonna trace our light cord around the top, perforate the lid with small holes, and then hopefully we can pop it out. Bad. Okay, I went ahead and just spray painted the top of our lid black. I wanted it to match our light fixture that we have here. And now we're just ready to assemble. So let's see this whole thing come together. Let's go see how this thing looks styled, because we're done. Okay, we're back, it's the next day, and let's check on our little ammonia patina science experiment that we started yesterday. I'm actually gonna put some gloves on. I can definitely see a lot of color going on in this container, which is really exciting. If I could get this glove on, that'd be great. Oh, wow. Look at all that blue. 
I'm gonna take these out and give them a little clean and then we can see what we're left with. Okay, I am so happy with how these are looking. Look how beautiful all the texture is, this blue color, and I've run these underwater, this blue is not coming off. I just think it has such a nice texture. So all we have to do is assemble our pieces and then we can see how they look on a nice little drawer. So our last DIY and final video is called DIY Neon Sign Decor. Over 2 million views. And this one premiered July 21st, 2015. These are cool. Neon signs, very Tumblr. We made them for cheap. Yes, you did. To start this first method of neon sign, we drew out the words dream on. Cut a piece of string the length of your wire and roughly lay the string along the words and see if you have enough. Bend the wire along the shape of your word. Nice cursive there, Kelsey. To make the actual neon effect, we're using EL wire, which is battery operated and magical, and we're still mind blown on how it works. We applied small amounts of super glue at a time and held the EL wire on top for a few seconds until it's stuck. Very good, very good. Next, tape your template onto your board, and using a drill bit roughly the size of your wire, drill holes at every X. I know drills might seem scary, but we promise they're actually really easy to use as long as you follow safety precautions. It's true, and it's like riding a bike. If you haven't picked up a drill in a while, it's okay, because you'll remember how. <laughs> Was that even insightful whatsoever? Using a drill is like riding a bike. Now onto the fun part. Start at the back of your board and thread your wire through the first hole. Using our path we drew out before, thread your wire in and out. This kind of reminds us of the shoestring books we had as kids that teach you how to tie your shoelaces. This is really cool though. I'm really fascinated by how they're making neon signs without blowing glass as well as making them seamless. I'm wondering if there's a way where I could hybrid these two ideas together. Becky and Kelsey, you guys are f***ing adorable though. In like a non-condescending way. Like you're very easy to listen to, I'm following along, and you're f***ing adorable. DIY revolution. Us and our crew are taking over by DIYing the world for cheap. Squad, DIY squad. That's us, that's me and you, that's all of us. That's our little family. Squad, what was that? Okay, we're gonna make a neon sign, and I'm super excited about this one. I can't tell if Rachel's AirPods are nearby. Okay, we're making a neon sign and I have my little friend here. This is Baljeet's dog. <laughs> Honestly, I've just been walking around with him on my stomach since lunchtime. I think it's time to say goodbye to little Ozzy. Cause it's mommy. Here's two for you, and I'm here on my own now. So to reduce this DIY down to its parts, I need a board, some sort of LED strip, and super glue. I also just got these things. They're called standoffs. These ones are from Ikea. You can also get them on Amazon, but this is just gonna help us at the end when I wanna install it on a wall. Instead of using a board, I'm using this white cast acrylic sheet. So you can't really see it right now, but it has a really nice milky kind of texture and color. Instead of using EL wire, I'm actually gonna swap it out for this. And this is a flexible silicone LED light strip. And the difference between this and the EL wire is it's gonna be a lot brighter. So depending on what kind of environment you're using, sometimes the EL wire has a hard time showing, like if the lights are on, for example. But let me plug this in for you and I'll show you what this looks like, even in this light. So I found this on Amazon. I have 16 feet of it. It's obviously gonna be a lot more than I probably need, but this is what was available. This also comes in all different colors, so have fun with it. So I went back and forth for a while trying to figure out what word I was gonna do for this neon sign and I came down to the word honey. H-U-N-N-Y. I want to hang this up in my house and it's kind of just it's a little bit personal between my boyfriend and I and we live there so 
It's also just cute. For my letters, I wanna have them nine centimeters for each letter, and then I'm giving three for spacing. And this is just gonna help me with my cursive as I go along. If you are interested in the exact sign that I'm making, we'll have all the dimensions posted on the blog. Yikes. Mm. Sorry, everyone. I was just using a whiteboard marker to help me with my lines, and that way I know it will wash off no problem. Honey. I think we're ready to glue the wire onto the board. And that's where our super glue comes in. I think I'm gonna erase this as I go, just so I can remember where my lines are and the shapes of the letters, because with all these cursive lines, it can get kind of confusing. So as I go, I'm just gonna see the shape that the wire wants to go, and I'm gonna honor that a little bit. For any sharp edges, a pair of pliers is gonna come in handy with keeping those corners tight. Also to help with any tight corners, you can actually remove some of the silicone uh, cover. There's just an important note when you're doing this. You can only remove it from the solid side. You don't want to remove any from the stripe side because this is where our LED components are in the light strip itself. So we don't want to compromise those, but it is safe to cut just a little bit of silicone out of the, the solid side. Obviously this isn't the cleanest look, but when your lights are on, you're never going to see these kinds of details. Okay, things are looking really good. Obviously, like in the video that Kelsey and Becky, when they made these, doing this with a friend would probably be a lot easier. But I pretty much grabbed every clamp that I could find. And I found that these little, what are these paper clips? To be really helpful, as well as just any old pliers. I also was gonna end the H and the Y kind of in the same spot, but then I saw the whole thing underlined as I was finishing this off with the Y, and I thought, why not? We have all this extra LED strip anyway. Let's just give it a cute little underline to finish it off. There's like a little black line, and, there's, and they are about an inch apart from each other. So that is a safe spot to cut this, where you're not gonna compromise one of our LED components. I'm just gonna steal the end cap from our LED strand, and put it at the end here for a seamless finish. If you do happen to get any glue on your board, it easily comes off with either Goo Gone or an acetone-based nail polish remover or just straight up acetone. The last step is gonna be drilling our hole to do cable management, and I'm also gonna go ahead and drill our holes for our standoffs in each corner. I'm just protecting the table. I have this elevated on some scrap wood. And an important thing when you're drilling acrylic sheets or plexiglass is just going really slowly with your drill bit. You don't want it to go so fast that it heats up and actually melts the plastic. You just want to let the drill bit do the work. I also just put some tape for fraying. Ideally, that hole would be smaller, but unfortunately, our plug-in component is just a nice, thick boy, so. But this looks so good. I guess the real test is gonna be plugging it in. I really hope the cord's still working. Let's try it out, shall we? <gasps> yes. Yay! Okay, that's a neon sign. If I've ever seen a neon sign, neon sign, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and then we can take a closer look of it hung up on the wall. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I had so much fun remaking old TSG DIYs. And let me know in the comments down below which DIY was your favorite. Also, if you like this kind of content, send us your favorite TSG videos and maybe we can do this again sometime. If you're not already, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell because here's a sneak peek of what's coming next week.
I'm gonna be doing some of my favorite sustainable activities as well as trying out some new ones. And I've invited a couple YouTubers along for the ride. I also love that there's like a Band-Aid on it. That is how rough shaped this cabinet is in. I made these this morning. There's probably an ingredient in here that I don't know if you've ever tried. They're not that kind of brownie. Ew. 